Hello, do you like spooky stories? Well then, you're on the right track. <laughs> You'll need a ticket to ride the ghost trolley. Just step inside and see our agent. Don't be afraid, she won't bite. Hello, my pretties. Welcome. All aboard. Yes, streetcars carried passengers. But did you know they also carried mail? Yourself. If this is a joke, I, I don't think it's very funny. Please help me, Stop. help me. Stop, I said. Please help me, help uh, me, help, help me. I, I'm not hearing this. Please. Help me. It's not help real. Me. Please help me. It is... Help me. It's help. not real, I said. Help me. Stop it. Oh. Please help me. Help me. for me. Oh, 
thank you, sir. My husband, he was a businessman and traveled. In Chicago, there was a terrible fire, and I asked them if they could please find him to return him home for burial. But the fire was so intense that all they could find was his head. Our streetcars all come from the very past, some darker than others. The car before us was once used to transport convicted criminals to the courthouse where their final verdict was to be read. In one case, a wrongly convicted accused criminal received the ultimate sentence, death. On the day the verdict was carried out, the wrongly accused vowed to return and seek vengeance upon those who had wrongly convicted him. That verdict was carried out under a full moon 100 years ago, tonight. This is not okay. Jim? Jim, come on, stop it. Make it stop now. Please. Jim? Jim? On October 31, 1944, a Twin City Rapid Transit streetcar was returning to Minneapolis on the Como Harriet Line. At the controls, Motorette Tina Hooper Huber. But car 1313 never reached its destination. Somewhere between Linden Hills and 36th Street, right along here, the streetcar simply vanished. What happened that October evening? Where did the car, the passengers, and Motorette Huber go? At almost 50 feet long and 50,000 pounds, a streetcar doesn't just disappear, but somehow 1313 did. War worries were high in 1944, so some people believe the car fell victim to a secret weapon. But would it make sense for an enemy to randomly attack a streetcar? Perhaps the weapon belonged to us and was being transported to the Twin Cities Ordnance Plant in New Brighton. Could it have detonated accidentally? Others believe car 1313 was struck by a rogue lightning bolt. The overhead wire, the cable that carries electricity to a streetcar, acts like a miles-long lightning rod. A single bolt of lightning carries anywhere from 100 million to 1 billion volts, but occasionally a super bolt occurs, a rough strike that can deliver 10 times the normal voltage. That much electrical energy might be enough to vaporize a streetcar and everyone in it. Car 
1313's fate? From there, the theories get even stranger. There are those who believe the car 1313 fell victim to alien visitors from another world. Perhaps the streetcar was disintegrated by a powerful ray. Or maybe it was beamed aboard, its occupants kidnapped and taken far from Earth. Although outlandish, there were reports of strange lights in the sky that night. Of course, it was Halloween. Finally, one more theory has been advanced, that the streetcar simply moved into another dimension. As we learn more about quantum physics and the mysteries of time and space, the existence of alternative dimensions becomes more and more plausible. Did 1313 find a hole in the space-time continuum? Did Motorette Huber motor through a wormhole to another extension of our world? We may never know, but each year near Halloween, people report hearing a streetcar traveling along this stretch of the old Como Harriet line. Some report seeing the car materializing for a brief moment before slipping back into the past. Car 1313 has become the Phantom Trolley. Lakewood Cemetery. Many famous people have made this their forever home. Here's a story about one of them. Thomas Lowry is credited with building Twin City Rapid Transit. Lowry came to Minneapolis in 1867 with his new law degree. Most of his work dealt with real estate in the growing Twin Cities. His fledgling streetcar company was seen partly as a way to help the cities grow. Over the years, Twin City Lines grew into one of the finest street railway systems in the world. As a boy growing up in Illinois, Lowry met his father's lawyer, Abraham Lincoln. Young Thomas looked up to Lincoln. He became the boy's hero. In 1861, Abe Lincoln became the 16th president of the United States. And beginning that day, Lowry began having nightmares. In those dreams, Lowry saw Lincoln dying in a horrible fire. As the flames grew rapidly out of control, Lincoln appeared trapped, boxed in, unable to escape. Lowry would wake screaming as fire consumed Lincoln's body. The dreams continued and Larry became convinced he was foreseeing the president's death. He thought about sending a warning message to the White House, but decided he would just be considered another raving madman. When Lincoln was felled by a bullet in the Ford Theater, Larry thought the nightmares would cease. But in fact, they continued for the remainder of his life. He would often awake panicked as he felt the heat of the flames licking at the president's blackening corpse. Following his death in 1865, Lincoln's body was carried from Washington to his home in Illinois aboard a specially built rail coach. This splendid car had been intended for Lincoln's presidential travels. Ironically, it would be used only for his last journey. As the train chugged slowly across the country, millions paid their respect. Lincoln's funeral car, as it came to be known, was stored for a while, then passed into general use on the railroad, and finally fell into disrepair and was all but abandoned. In 1905, Thomas Lowry purchased the car from the Union Pacific Railroad 
and set about restoring it to its former glory. Thomas Laurie died in 1909. The Lincoln funeral car was willed to the Minnesota Federation of Women's Clubs. The group had agreed to erect a fireproof building in which to display the car. But on March 8, 1911, those plans went up in smoke. A prairie fire swept through Anoka County where the Lincoln car was stored. One of America's most treasured historic relics was totally consumed. Had Thomas Laurie foreseen this tragedy and his nightmares? The secret lies buried with him. Okay, Bill, it's the last one. It looks great. Yeah, I gotta get his bony body up here. He doesn't want to stay in place. This will look really great once Dave gets it lighted. I think we've got a good one going here. Really spooky. I think this is going to be the best ghost Charlie we ever did. Okay, that's, that's it then. So uh, let's get dark so let's get back to the lot. At least it's warm out here today. Okay, Patrick, I'll take the back. Okay, sounds like a plan. Now what? I have no idea why there's no power. Oh, it looks like somebody cut the power off to the overhead. I'll go up to the car bar and check and see what's going on. If this is somebody's idea of a joke, kick their butts for me, would you please? Okay, I'll do that, gladly. Patrick, you wouldn't believe how spooky it's getting under here. Oh, spooky is it? Well, don't let it get to you, Bill. Patrick, those eyes you made look really great, really spooky. But Bill, they're not turned on yet. Bill? Patrick? Patrick? Bill? Are you there, Bill? Are you okay? Bill? Well, there you are. 
I hope you enjoyed the ride. Now, good night. Sleep tight. <laughs> Sweet dreams. Sweet dreams.